Let us discuss the male reproductive system. So I'm going to be starting off with the testes. Now these are two oval shaped structures that are held outside in a sac called the scrotum. So the scrotum offers protection to the testes and hangs outside the body. Now when it comes to the testes, these have two main functions. Function number one is that they are involved in the formation of sperm, a process called spermatogenesis. Function number two is that they are also involved in the production and secretion of male hormones. These are collectively known as the androgens, the most important one of which is testosterone. So when you talk about the testes, as mentioned before, these hang outside the body. And the reason for this is so as to provide a suitable temperature for the formation of sperms. So sperms develop best at temperatures that are lower than that of the body. Now within the testes, you're going to have these long and highly coiled tubes known as the seminiferous tubules. The function of these tubules is formation of sperms. Now the reason why these tubes are long is to provide a large surface area for somatogenesis. We also have Sertoli cells. Now the Sertoli cells nourish the sperms. They provide the necessary nutrients for the sperms. Last one, interstitial cells. These are cells that surround the seminiferous tubules, the function of which is production of the androgens, the important one of which is testosterone. Now just a minute, when you talked about the function of the testes, I mentioned formation of sperms and formation of male hormones. But essentially, it's really the seminiferous tubules that form the sperm and it's the interstitial cells that are responsible for the formation of the male androgens. So the seminiferous tubules then join together to form a long and cold tube known as the epididymis. This is loosely attached to the outer surface of the testes. So the function of the epididymis is storage of sperms. So once the sperms have been produced by the testes, they then proceed to the epididymis where they are temporarily stored. Now one thing about the epididymis is that it consists of highly coiled tubes. So the coiling helps to increase the surface area available for the storage of the sperms. So from the epididymis, the sperms are then passed on to a wider tube called the sperm duct or the vas deferens. Essentially, it transports the sperms from the epididymis to the urethra. The two vas deferens then come together and open up into the urethra. Now the urethra is a long tube that connects the vas deferens and the urinary bladder. It transports both the semen and the urine through the penis. Now, in case you're wondering what the semen is, this is simply a collection of the fluids that are produced by the accessory glands together with the sperm cells. Now, the walls of the urethra are made of tough cartilage. This ensures that it remains open at all times and does not collapse. Why? To allow for the passage of urine and semen, of course. Now, up to this point, I would like to mention three accessory organs that are found in the male reproductive system. Specifically, I'm referring to the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, and the cowper's gland. So, let me start with the seminal vesicles. These are located a short distance away from the urethra, and they secrete an alkaline fluid that nourishes the sperm. That is, they provide the necessary nutrients to the sperm. And the reason why this is possible is because they contain nutrients such as carbohydrates, especially in the form of fructose, amino acids, vitamins, and so on, which are necessary for the nourishment of the sperm. Moving on to the prostate gland, this is located at the junction between the vas deferens and the urethra. It also secretes an alkaline fluid that has two functions. Number one is that it activates the sperm. It ensures that the sperm are now mobile. And number two is that it neutralizes the vaginal fluids. So the fluids that are present in the vagina tend to have a low pH, slightly acidic. And this is preferable for the vagina because it inhibits the entry of pathogens such as bacteria into the body, through the vagina of course. But it has a negative effect on the sperm cells. So this is where the fluid comes in. It neutralizes the acidity of the vaginal fluids. Moving on to the last one, the cowper's glands. Now, these glands are located below the prostate gland. They also secrete an alkaline fluid that neutralizes the acidity along the urethra. So, the urethra acts as a passage for both semen and urine. 
And remember, urine has a low pH, slightly acidic as well. So the alkaline fluid neutralizes this acidity, ensuring that the conditions are optimal for the functioning and activity of the sperms. Now, all of these fluids that are produced by these three glands together with the sperm cells are what make up the semen. Now, moving on to the next structure, and that is the penis itself. So the penis consists of spongy tissue, muscle, and blood vessels. The reason why it's referred to as spongy tissue is because it has spaces. So during sexual arousal, these spaces fill up with blood, ensuring that the penis becomes firm, rigid, and erect so that it can penetrate into the female's body through the vagina. So this allows for the deposition of the sperm cells into the female reproductive system. This process is known as ejaculation. Now, on my last note, I would like to mention two interesting things. One has to do with semen. So, semen contains roughly around 100 million sperm cells per cubic centimeter. So, that means in a single ejaculation, you can have more than 200 million sperm cells. Now, the second interesting fact has to do with the bladder. So, remember I talked about how the urethra is the passage for both urine and semen. Then how come during ejaculation, urine is not released? Now, the reason is because during ejaculation, the body undergoes a process called sphincter closure. So the urinary sphincter, which is a ring of muscles that is located at the base of the bladder, contracts. This prevents urine from being released during ejaculation. So it ensures that only semen is expelled through the urethra and not urine. And that... Ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this lesson.